Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Using different scales on your dominant seventh chords is a great way to get some variation and introduce some new sounds into your solos. In this video, I'm going to go over six different scale choices that you can use, and they're pretty much sort of the basic set that you want to be comfortable with if you want to improvise over jazz standards or originals. For each of the scales, I'm going to go over what notes are in there, the extensions and alterations they are against the chord, and also a set of chord voicings that you can use if you want to comp and really get that sound across. I'm also going to go over a less common idea for soloing that goes a little bit beyond just the basic diatonic triads or seventh chords, but that really nails the sound of this scale when you're improvising over a dominant. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes, checking out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. While I was preparing this video, I was thinking about whether I should include the blues scale. But then it occurred to me that actually when we're using the blues scale to improvise with, then it's on the tonic chord, it's actually not on the dominant chord. So in that sense, is the blues scale really a dominant scale? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. The first scale I want to talk about is the most basic scale, which is the dominant scale that fits with a major key. So if we're in the key of C major, that's a G7. And that means that the scale that we're talking about is a G dominant scale or a G mixolydian scale. And that scale sounds like this. Now, if we want to look at what extensions are in there, then we can actually play uh, the G7 arpeggio with all extensions. That would be just stacking thirds within the scale. And that would be this. So G, B, D, F, A, C, and E. And that means that we have the G7, and then we have a 9th, an 11th, and a 13th. So the 11th is not something that we're usually including in the chord, mostly because if we do that, then it kind of clashes with the 3rd. So you're only using that if you're playing a sus chord. And that means that you would also use this scale if you come across a G7 sus 4. If we want to have a structure that really spells out the sound of this scale, then we can take the basic notes of the chord. So in that case, that would be the third and the seventh, so the B and the F. And then we can add the two extensions that really give us the color of this scale. And that would be the ninth and the thirteenth. So what we have here now, if we order it in pitch, are actually F, A, B, and E. So these four notes are actually an F major seven flat five arpeggio. So that means that we can use that arpeggio when we're soloing over the chord. And if you want to play that arpeggio, then that sounds like this. We can also use this set of notes as a chord voicing. And uh, that will give us these voicings for G7. And if we use the F major 7 flat 5 arpeggio in an improvisation, over a G7 resolving to C major, then that could sound like this. So here I'm first playing this small pattern out of the F major 7 flat 5 arpeggio, so... Then a G major triad. Then I'm playing the arpeggio one more time, but now I'm playing it as a drop 2 voicing, which gives us this really nice uh, chordal arpeggio. And then a scale one, and then resolving that to the third of C major 7. The next logical dominant to take a look at is the one from the minor key, so in this case the key of C minor. And that's of course still a G7, and the scale that's associated with that is C harmonic minor. Uh, so we are playing C harmonic minor from G, and uh, that scale has quite a few names. It's sometimes referred to as a mixolydian flat 9, flat 13, uh, Phrygian major, or Phrygian dominant scale, and it sounds like this. And if we make an arpeggio to check out the different extensions, then that would be this. In this case, we still have the G7 arpeggio, so... But then the extensions are flat 9, 11, and flat 13. We have essentially just a mixolydian scale, but we change the two extensions to uh, from A to A-flat and E to E-flat. And that means that we can kind of do the same thing as what I did with the G7 in major, except now we're going to get a little bit a different 
arpeggio because we have the F and the B, and then we add the flat nine, that's the A flat, and the flat 13, that's an E flat, and then we actually have this F half diminished arpeggio, so F minor seven flat five arpeggio. And this also works really well as a chord voicing. So for a G7 with a flat 9 and a flat 13, then we have these voicings. And then this one. And of course, we can also play the arpeggio, and that will be this. An example of how this arpeggio might sound if you use it in a solo could sound like this. So notice here that I'm resolving to C major and not to C minor, because very often you'll find that you can use this sound, so the mixolydian flat 9, flat 13 sound, uh, when you're actually playing a cadence in major, and then you're essentially borrowing the dominant from minor and using C harmonic minor when you're improvising over the dominant chord. But you still have to resolve it to the original tonic, which is a C major chord. The first part of this line is just the F half diminished arpeggio, so then a D diminished arpeggio, and then a scale one, and then again the F half diminished arpeggio, but now from the B, so down to the E flat, and then resolving to the third of C major, which is an E. A big part of the modern jazz sound is actually the sound of the melodic minor scale being put to use on other chords, and one of them is the alto scale. So here we're using melodic minor, but we're using it from the seventh degree. So in the case of our G7, that means that we're using the melodic minor scale that's found a half step above the G. So that's the A flat melodic minor scale. That sounds like this. In the previous examples, I could just build an arpeggio from the G and that way get a picture of the basic chord and the extensions. For the alto scale, that doesn't actually work that well because if we build uh, that arpeggio with all the seven notes, then we get an arpeggio that's built on a G half diminished chord like this. So in that case, our third of the chord, the B, is actually found as an eleventh on the chord. And that doesn't make too much sense, but in the end we can also just think of it and just take all the notes and look at what are they if you relate them to a G7. Uh, and that gives us a G7 with a flat uh, 5, a flat 13, a flat 9 and a sharp 9. Some good voicings to give us the sound of the alto scale would be to use a dominant with a sharp 9 and a flat 13. So that would be something like this. An arpeggio that I use quite a lot when I'm improvising over alto dominance is like the G7 cell itself not really a diatonic arpeggio, and that's the E flat 7 sharp 5 arpeggio. So this arpeggio, it contains the augmented triad, which is a nice sound and really characteristic for the melodic minor, uh, and at the same time it also has the flat 13, so the E flat, and the flat 5, which is the D flat. If you play this arpeggio in one position, then that could be like this. A line improvising over a G7 alto could sound like this. Here I'm first playing the E flat 7 sharp 5 arpeggio, so then a trill on the sharp 9, down to the 7th, and then up the scale, skipping up to the flat 13, and then you get sharp 9, flat 9, down on the 7th, and then resolving to the 5th of C major. The other dominant sound that we use really a lot from melodic minor is the Lydian dominant. So that's found on the fourth degree. So in the case of our G7, that means that G7 is in this case the fourth degree in D melodic minor, and that scale would sound like this. And here we can actually build an arpeggio from G and then get a G7 chord because that's the diatonic chord uh, found on the fourth degree in, in D melodic minor. And then so we have a dominant, just straight ahead G7, then with a 9, a sharp 11, and a 13. A chord voicing that really spells out this sound would be a G7 with a sharp 11 and a 9, and that would sound like this. Or 
of this one. An arpeggio that I use really a lot when I'm improvising over Lydian dominance is another uh, dominant 7 sharp 5 arpeggio. So in this case it's not found on the 5th of the melodic minor scale, it's found on the 7th of the melodic minor scale. And that means that in the case of this D melodic minor, that's a C sharp 7 sharp 5. So that would be this arpeggio. The Lydian dominant sound is mostly used on dominant chords that don't actually resolve. So in this case I'm using it on a G7 that's working as a backdoor dominant. And G7 is the backdoor dominant in the key of A major. So I'm resolving it to an A major 7 chord. So here I'm starting with a C sharp 7 sharp 5 arpeggio. So then a small scale fragment. D minor triad, and uh, then a G, and then another descending G mi D minor triad, resolving to the third of A major, which is a C sharp. Another great sounding scale that you can use on a dominant is already taking us a little bit out of the tonal and functional harmony because that's using the diminished scale on a dominant chord. So for our G7 here, the diminished scale you would use would be this one. And even though you can't really, because this scale is not really something that you can stack thirds in without getting anything but diminished chords, you can still sort of try to construct a picture of what this scale contains uh, playing an arpeggio like this. So what I'm doing here is I just took the G7 and then I'm adding some of the extensions that are in the scale uh, and you can't really add them by just stacking thirds, as I said, because then you're just going to end up with diminished chords, so that's not really going to tell us anything. But we have the G7, those notes are in there, and then what I put on top of it was a flat 9, a sharp 11, and a 13. And really, the sound of this scale is usually characterized by having a 13 and a flat 9. So that would be a chord voicing like this one. Or this one. And you can of course also use this drop two voicing. And a picture that I really like to use when I'm improvising on this sound, which I find is a little bit overlooked, is a dominant flat five arpeggio. And the one that I'm using is in this case from the minor third. So in this case it's a G7, so the minor third is a B flat, so that's a B flat seven flat five arpeggio. If we're using this scale sound and this arpeggio in a line of a G7 resulting to a C major, then that sounds like this. So here I'm beginning with a G7 arpeggio, so then I'm moving into my B flat 7 flat 5 arpeggio, and then a small scale fragment, and then another, but this time from the E, the same the B flat 7 flat 5 arpeggio, resolving to the fifth of C major 7, which is G. The whole tone scale is another scale sound that doesn't really belong in tonal harmony or in functional harmony, but it is a really great sound if you check out some of the Strayhorn or Ellington stuff and also a few of the Wayne Shorter compositions really make great use of this sound. If I play the whole tone scale that fits on G7, that would be this scale. And again, we can't really construct a chord or an arpeggio that's going to tell us what the extensions are because the scale doesn't really fit with just stacking thirds within it. Uh, but you can sort of stack the two uh, augmented triads that make up this scale in a way that it really gives the impression of a chord, and that would be this way of doing that. So first a G augmented triad, and then an F augmented triad. And if we look at that as a G7 arpeggio, then we have a G7 sharp 5, and then a 9, and a flat 5 or a sharp 11. The chord sound that's sort of associated with this scale is a dominant chord with a sharp 5 and a 9, so that would be this type of sound. Of course you can play that in a few different ways, you can also play that like this, or like this. The whole tone scale is also a symmetrical scale, and in fact anything you play, if you move it up a whole step or a major third, you're still within the scale. Uh, one of the arpeggios that I use a lot when I'm improvising with this sound 
is using the dominant 7 flat 5 arpeggio from the 3rd of the chord. So in this case we're using G7 and the 3rd of the chord is B and that means that the dominant 7 flat 5 arpeggio is a B dominant 7 flat 5, so that would be this arpeggio. An example of how this might sound in a solo could sound something like this. Here I'm starting with the B7 flat 5 arpeggio, starting first on the 3rd, so the E flat, and then down to the root of the arpeggio, and then really just back down again, and then an F augmented triad descending, and an E flat augmented triad descending from B, and then just the F and the D sharp to point us to the 3rd of C, which is an E. These six scales are really going to cover most of what you're going to come across if you start checking out the basic jazz repertoire. And you really want to have them in your vocabulary and also have some freedom in choosing between them so that you can apply them in different situations. I'm of course also curious if you think that there's a dominant sound that I didn't talk about in this video and that you use all the time, then please leave a comment because of course I'm always looking for more options and maybe there was just something that I forgot. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and it's the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding some solid methods and good strategies for checking out all the interesting things about jazz guitar and improvising. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. It's because of the support that I'm getting from my patrons that I can keep on publishing videos every week. I'm very grateful for that. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.